At this time, I want to ask all the kids to come up because we're going to read the Christmas story. And as our kids are coming up, could we just honor them? And they crushed it earlier. One more time for the kids. I love it. You guys can have a seat right here. Y'all look good in your Christmas stuff. And you guys did such a good job earlier. I'm really proud of you. You can come on up here, Lily. We got you. All right. This was amazing. I am super proud of you guys. So we're going to read the Christmas story, but you guys have a part. When I say next, anybody know what you're going to say? Jesus Connection. That's it. So let's practice. I'll say next, and you say Jesus Connection. Ready? Next. Jesus Connection. That's right, because in every Bible story, we want to look for Jesus. So let's read this. It says, at that time, the Roman emperor Augustus decreed a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph, can you guys say Joseph? Joseph was a descendant of King David. He had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary. Can you guys say Mary? Mary. His fiance, who was now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. What was her baby's name? Jesus. Yes, Jesus. She gave birth to her first child, a son. And she wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. What's next? Jesus Connection! Oh, that was so good! So here's the Jesus Connection. Jesus came to earth because he loves us. So here's what we want you guys to know this Christmas season. Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he came to earth, died and rose again for you. So can you guys say, Jesus loves me? Jesus, Jesus loves me. me! And then tell all the adults, say, Jesus loves you! Jesus that's awesome. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for coming to earth because you loved us. And I pray that each of these kids would experience your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good job. You guys can go back to your parents. Yeah! That's awesome. Man, that's such an incredible. What a great day. Public worship is going to come on up. And as they're coming up, could we take a moment and just honor public worship is band, it's creative, it's production, it's broadcast, all under Cody's leadership. Can we honor them? They have led the way today. And our heart today has been to give you a little taste of joy to begin the Christmas season and to let us know that joy is not rooted in our circumstances. Joy is rooted in Jesus. So all the laughs, all the fun, it's all been about Jesus. And that's how we're gonna end our time together. In just a few moments, one of our incredible teammates, she's gonna read the gospel in her own words. Now, why would we read the gospel for Christmas Spectacular? Because we need to understand that the Christmas story is one scene, a huge scene, but one scene in a way bigger story called the gospel story, the good news that can change our eternity. So we want to recognize that Jesus didn't just come, but he died and he rose again. And then after that, these guys are going to lead us in a few songs just to give us some space before we get into the busyness, just to reflect on Jesus. And if at any point during this, if you're like, man, I need to follow Jesus, like I realized that he came because he loved me, then just go back to the camera platform. Our prayer team is back there. They'd love to pray for you. If you're online, you can just email us, prayer at publicchurch.com. But we just want to give you some space to focus on Jesus. So would you guys honor Miss Emily Short? She's going to read the gospel in her own words. I believe to share the gospel, we begin with the story of Adam and Eve in the garden. Adam and Eve were created whole and without sin, and as their descendants, we know what that wholeness is. But then they're given a choice. Sin enters the world through Adam and Eve choosing disobedience because of this misguided thought that the father was withholding something from them. So they're sent out of the garden, which is where we've joined them in this life between the first garden and the second that we will enter into when Jesus returns. 
everything we do here in this middle ground is in this effort to return to that wholeness because we can feel that something is missing. Sin has just become that barrier to receiving it, which is why we need Jesus and why we begin with the story in the garden. So what does that actually look like for us being in this in-between right now? My story is that I crumbled. When my efforts to reach perfection would fail, I longed to numb that pain. Addiction became a very normal part of my life, and the shame from it was so suffocating, it silenced anything the Holy Spirit was trying to say to me. When numbing wasn't working, I believed my only choice was suicide because the pit of depression that I found myself nestling into became too heavy to keep hiding. So instead of surrendering this pain and the hurts at the feet of Jesus, I stayed silent and isolated. I retreated inward and became what shame wanted me to believe. Because when I was given a choice, I would choose creation over the creator. I was an addict in desperate need of a savior, dirty, gross, and messy, which I admit are all true, but only when I was outside of the love and the blood and the grace of Jesus. And it was this realization that moved me and has the power to move you out of this misery of imperfection and into a desire to be a kingdom bringer on this side of eternity. Because how beautiful yet chaotic is it that God created the entire universe, stars and galaxies, sunrises, sunsets, everything that we love, and then sent the redeemer of that creation into the world as a baby, a child who had needs, the same needs of each of us to be loved and held and seen, prioritized the need to be fed and bathed by the tender hands of his mother and father, a child who was the Messiah, who was later given a choice. This choice was to die a painful death for things he never did so that we could have life, but not the hard and gross messy life that we will often find ourselves in but life that is full of beauty and wonder and coffee with your friends and laughing with your grandparents and the joy that we feel just watching someone we love talk about their passions. This is the life that, that Jesus left heaven for so that we could be in this relationship with him. But Jesus also had the choice to walk away because he didn't have to take the cross and he definitely didn't have to stay there. So the gospel is simple. It just is so indescribable and so undeserved that makes it feel complicated. Jesus was tempted and hurt just like we are, but he remained sinless. His blood covered all of our wrongs and his choice to stay on the cross was his love being displayed for the world. All he wants of us is to cry out, Father, I I can't do this life alone. I'm a sinner in need, a savior. I want to do this life with you. And so all he wants is our hearts. There's a quote from a book called The Cure that says, what if it was less important that anything ever gets fixed than that nothing has to be hidden? This freedom isn't just a destination we try to reach or something that's reserved for heaven. It's a journey that we can walk in right now with the Holy Spirit, freed from sin and darkness, healed from the bondage of shame until we reach the gates of heaven and look into our Father's eyes for the first time as he says, welcome home, my beloved.